Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to this point in the Congress. Thank you for the challenges you've given our hearts. Thank you for the impact of the Congress in every heart. Thank you for the challenge we have received from you through your children. We're asking, O oh Lord, that the vision you have given us now, as we go forth, you'll grant us the fire and the faithfulness to go along with the vision. Africa shall be saved. Into all the places you are sending us, we pray that you will be your representative. Exemplifying your character. Expecting your coming. Exalting your name and your word. And extending the kingdom. Go with us in your power. Help us, Lord, that nothing will distract our attention. And we pray that we will not rest until Africa, the continent, and other parts of the world we come from have had a chance of knowing that Jesus Christ is Savior. And they have had the opportunity to take a decision on what to do with the Lord. Be with us, Lord. Teach us your word even now. In Jesus' name we pray. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, verse 19, and verse 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. We have always been in the habit of calling this place a kind of mount of transfiguration. And I want to bring that event back to your mind. Jesus Christ had gone up to the mount and as he prayed then Moses and Elijah appeared and he discussed together about his death one he had come to fulfill the law to feel full and to fulfill therefore Moses representing the law was there. He had come also so that the one the prophets had been pointing to, he is coming, he is coming. And true to the word of those prophets, he had come. And Elijah, representing those prophets, also appeared. His three disciples, the disciples in the inner circle, they are always mentioned in the first group. You look at the 12 disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and you see the listing of their names in all the Gospels where they appear as well as in the Acts. You'll find that the 12 are divided into groups of four, four, and four. And in the first four, always in the first four. You may have rearrangement within the group, but they're always in the first four. You'll find Peter, you'll find Andrew, you'll find James, and you'll find John. And those in that inner circle, you are taking three of them, Peter, James, and John, to the Mount of Transfiguration. And of course, when they saw 
what they saw. It made a deep impression on them. And Peter was about saying, in fact he was saying, let's rest here, stay here, and build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And then the voice of the Lord spoke, here is my beloved son. Hear ye him. By the time they opened their eyes, Elijah was gone. Moses was gone. And it remained Jesus. Jesus only. A message. Jesus, all in all, was saying, is a savior, is a sanctifier, is a healer, is a baptizer, and the coming king. And as you have come to this Mount of Transfiguration, you have heard from many preachers, you have heard from the singers, many people have touched your lives, and now as we come to the end, we want to turn our minds, our faces, our thoughts away from Moses, away from Elijah, away from ministers, away from singers, and now Look at Jesus the King. So that as we're going back, we want to talk about the King, exalt the King, and then extend his kingdom. Jesus is Savior, he is Lord, and he is King. At the present time, he reigns because he is enthroned in the hearts of the people that know him that believe on him that love him the eternal reign is still to come and the eternal kingdom still awaits the appointed time but today the people that are repenting the people that are believing on the lord they are making him the king of their lives the king of their hearts and that's why it's fitting for us to conclude this um, congress with the personality of the king the program of the king and then the things we are to do the practice of the kingdom citizens we want to exalt him because he's king we want to exemplify his character because he is a model we're expecting is coming because he's the lover of our souls. But then, before he comes, he has given us an assignment. And that assignment is, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're here to extend his kingdom. I'll just be talking on three points. Number one, explaining his kingship explaining his kingship number two exalting the king exalting the king number three extending his kingdom from the very beginning jesus christ had been appointed by the father as king in genesis chapter 14 reading from verse 18 and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, blessed Abraham. And he said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he, Abraham, gave him Melchizedek tithes of all. Here we are introduced to this personality, Melchizedek. And this Melchizedek is referred to as king, as well as the priest of the Most High. The Jews that tread that and Moses himself that wrote that by inspiration must have been challenged very much because if you know anything about the children of Israel and about the things that the Lord gave them they had kings they had priests they had prophets 
but never did they have a king being a priest at the same time. There were times that the king, some of them, David in particular, was used in the prophetic office. And as you read the Psalms of David, you'll see many prophecies. But apart from David, the kings were not prophets. The prophets were not kings. The kings were not priests. The priests were not kings. But here we come across this one unique, different from the rest of the people that he was referred to as a king as well as a priest. And now you come to the New Testament and now you understand the reason why Melchizedek even appeared at all in Holy Writ. You have Hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being interpreted king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem. Salem is a derivative from shalom shalom in the hebrew is peace and so when it says king of salem it's talking about king of shalom and then it tells us in that verse 2 at the end which is king of peace without father here comes the mystery here comes the symbol here comes the representation here comes the type that the Old Testament had written and recorded without father, without mother, without descent, without neither having beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto, tell me out loud, the Son of God. And he abideth a priest continually. Jesus is King. King of righteousness is also king and the prince of peace. And so from the earliest pages of scripture, you have the understanding as you study that it was the intention of the Lord. It was the plan of the Lord. It was the purpose of God that Jesus will be king. A king is a ruler having control, having dominion, having authority, over men in a defined territory. When we talk about a king, you are talking about someone in a particular territory, in a particular domain, having authority and dominion over that whole realm. Not just on the land, but on the people in the land. And as you look at the Lord Jesus Christ, he is presented to us, presented to us as king. In fact, the kingship of Jesus Christ is the ultimate plan, the ultimate purpose of God. The Jews have fought it. And the Gentiles have fought it. And yet, if you look at Psalm 2, a messianic psalm, Psalm 2, why do the heathen rage? And why do the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth, they set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us, that he that seated in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet, yet, in spite of the raging of the heathen, yet, in spite of the vain imagination of the people, yet, in spite of the kings of the earth and the rulers of the earth taking counsel against the Lord and his anointed, yet, 
in spite of a conspiracy that the people of the world are seeing will break their bands asunder will throw away their cords from us in spite of all that yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion jesus will reign no matter the opposition of the devil no matter the conspiracy of the demons no matter the resistance of the nations jesus christ will reign as king yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion who is that king verse 7 i will declare the decree the lord has said unto me thou art my son this day have i begotten thee he is king in isaiah chapter 9 reading from verses 6 and 7 isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 for unto us a child is born in bethlehem unto us a son is given at calvary and the government shall be upon his shoulder after the church age and his name shall be called wonderful the one that works wonders counselors the one that guides us with his holy counsels the mighty god the one that comes to demonstrate the might of god the everlasting father the one that is the father the originator of eternity no beginning no ending the father of eternity and the prince of peace his name is jesus his title is king in verse 7 of the increase of his kingdom and the peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david upon the upon his kingdom to order each and to establish each with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this jesus will be king in daniel chapter 7 daniel chapter 7 reading from verse 13 and i saw in the night visions and behold one like unto the son of man that's jesus he came with the clouds of heaven that's jesus he came to the ancient of days that's god the father and they the host of heaven brought him the son of man near unto him near to the ancient of days and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom and all the people and nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away his kingdom which and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed you can see very clearly that jesus christ is king in zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 rejoice greatly o daughter of zion shout o daughter of jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the coach and the full of an ass you know that that is a prophetic statement concerning the lord jesus christ but you see the point there is referred to as king thy king cometh o daughter of jerusalem look at the fulfillment in matthew chapter 21 matthew chapter 21 reading from verse 1 and when they drew near unto jerusalem and were come to bethphage unto the mount of olives then sent jesus to disciples saying unto them go into the village over against you and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her 
loose them and bring them to me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord has need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and he called the fall of an ass. You will see then very clearly that Jesus Christ is king. His kingship, as we have seen, was predicted in the Old Testament. And then it was affirmed in the New Testament. Now, he doesn't appear to be reigning over the whole earth. Now, it doesn't appear that Jesus Christ is king in every nation and in every country and over every tribe, over all the people, all the languages and tongues. But the time is coming when he is going to reign over the whole earth. Amen? But now, is he king at all even today? Oh yes, he reigns in your heart. He occupies the throne in your heart. And in the hearts of all the people that believe, the people that have received him as Savior and Lord, he is king, reigning in the hearts of all true believers. He is the head of the church, and he's reigning in the church. Very soon, he will reign in the millennial kingdom, which will be established after the great tribulation. And then later, he will be reigning in his eternal kingdom. Then will the word of the Lord be fulfilled that he will reign forever and ever. Now, if Jesus is king, king in your heart and in your life today, what it is it you should be doing now in relationship with that king? That leads me to point number two, exalting the king. Exalting the king. Let's see what the father himself are done in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Philippians 2, 9, wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It tells us that the God of heaven has already highly exalted him. It is not just that he is thinking of exalting him he has already highly exalted him. He has given him already a name which is above every name. And because of the plan of God, the purpose of God, the program of God, which is the exaltation of Jesus Christ as Savior, as Lord, and as King, he tells us the consequence that exaltation has impact in heaven it has impact on earth it has impact under the earth it has impact high above it has impact here on earth it has impact down below it has impact among the holy angels and the redeemed of the lord who have already gone up to glory that exaltation of Jesus Christ has impact today in the lives of believers who are living even today. And then in eventually it's going to have impact in the whole earth. And then it has impact even in the world of spirits. Unseen, invisible. They recognize that name. They know the authority in that name. They know the power in that name. Even under the earth 
Jesus exaltation has impact and has a consequence that's why it says that the name at the name of Jesus every knee should bow the time is coming the day is soon approaching when every knee shall bow to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we who believe today we bow voluntarily we bow because we believe we bow because we love him we bow because we call him king the people who have not bowed in faith they are going to eventually bow by compulsion because the father the creator of the heavens of the and the earth is going to compel everyone to bow at the mention of the name of jesus and every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord and when every tongue does that it will be to the glory of the father now if that's what the father wants if that's the plan of the father if that is what the father is going to eventually effect in the whole universe what's the attitude of the believer today what is the believer doing today with the kingship the royalty of the lord jesus christ we are here to exalt him john the baptist says it in such a beautiful way in john chapter 3 john chapter 3 reading from verse 30 it says he must increase and i but i must decrease let me try to paint the picture so you will understand he must increase but i must decrease before you came to know the lord jesus christ as your savior you were everything in your eyes and jesus was nothing he was not in your thought he was not in your plan he was not on your heart he was not exalted in any way you didn't even know him you did everything you did without any reference to him you were all in all and you made him nothing self search on the throne of your heart and everything revolved along i around i my mind because you thought you were the king and everybody ought to bow down to you you worshipped yourself you wanted other people to worship you and if anything was being done in your community that is not related to you that didn't give you self-esteem or a promotion or publicity it was nothing to you because you are a total unbeliever jesus was nothing to you and then you became born again and as you became born again at the time of being born again he said behold i stand at the door and i'm knocking if any man hears my voice i will come in and dwell with him and sup with him that means commune with him and fellowship with him you open the door of the heart you allowed him to come in you said you received him as your savior and lord for the practical after you are born again you said lord it's wonderful to be born again i will take this territory you will take this territory you will you said at that time you were born again i accept this i accept this i accept this it appears that self went away from the throne but self was still present maybe it wasn't dominant maybe it wasn't preeminent maybe it wasn't even prominent but it was present it was still there and you have myself there self there you also have jesus there and then you began to read the scriptures and you read of the total abandonment and the total consecration and the, the total surrender and the total yieldedness of bible characters you read about you know that what with god and you began to look at your life the way you are almost sharing the throne with the lord jesus christ you say uh -uh, there is something wrong here and then you look at the life of samuel who had been given to the lord from his early childhood and there was no resistance or complaint you said something is wrong here i am not like this you look at bible characters 
who abandoned everything, gave everything, surrendered everything, yielded everything to the Lord. And you said, it is not exactly like this. And then you were told there is still something missing in your life. It is sanctification. Because this I must be crucified. This body of sin must be taken out of the way. Then you went back to the altar. You said, Lord, there is something happening here secretly in my heart this big eye this standing eye this rigid eye this rebellious eye this stubborn eye this thing that is standing firm in my heart and will not bend and bow without question that you'll still be arguing should it be that should it not be that i want you to take it off from my heart i don't even want its presence at all and then the Lord with his sanctifying fire and his sanctifying blood consumed everything and self was thrown out. And then Jesus Christ came over there. And now whatever he says, that's what you want to do. Wherever he sends, that's where you want to go. And every time when you wake up in the morning, you know the danger that self may still want to gain entrance. Therefore you say, I die daily i'm crucified with him nevertheless i live yet it is not the old i it is christ now that lives in me and the life i now live i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and he gave himself for me so it is christ that is now ruling and reigning in your life and anytime you find that self is trying to come back you see, I want, it means that self wants to usurp the place, the authority, the position of Jesus Christ, who is king. You say, no, it cannot be. Jesus must reign in my heart. He must increase. I must decrease. In every testimony, he must increase. I must decrease. In every message I give, he must increase. I must decrease in every practice, in everything I'm involved in, in the kingdom of God, or even in my secular occupation, I'm exalting him. I'm lifting him up. All I'm looking for, I don't want to promote myself. I don't want to exalt myself. You don't want to promote yourself. You don't want to exalt yourself. You do not want to be the center of your message. You do not want to be the center of your testimony. You don't want to be the center of your activities. You don't want to be the center of the program in the church. You don't want to be the center of anything. You want Jesus Christ to reign as King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in everything that we're doing. Anything we're considering, it is not. How will that affect me? Who am I? I should have been forgotten, eradicated. The self, the I, the me, the mind everything shall be burnt off by the fire of the holy ghost it is not how does that uh, program inconvenience me you know there are some people and they say that uh, they have jesus christ as their savior and lord if we say we want to plant a program want to reach out we want to evangelize the first question in their mind how does that affect my timetable how does that affect my uh, kind of uh, rhythm of life? Because I, I can't go beyond that point. I can't go beyond that point. Once it gets to that point, uh, count me out. The, for this program we are planning, how does that affect me? And then if we are planning something, how is, going, how is that going to affect the finance of our church? How will that affect the feeling of our people? How will that affect the highly placed people in our church? The question is, who is king? Who is reigning? Who should all these things center around? If we are planning a program, the question is not, how does it affect me? How does it affect state overseer? How does it affect national overseer? How does that disturb our timetable? Do we have any timetable? Do you have any other plan except to exalt Jesus Christ and to promote the Lord and to lift him up? It is not how it affects you, how it affects me. How does it glorify him? How does it exalt him? How does it spread his gospel? 
How does he do the plan, the purpose? How does it fulfill what he wants done? That's the question. From this morning, would you pray for me that I can forget myself and just lift up Jesus? From this morning, would you pray for yourself too as you pray for me that we all forget ourselves and remember Jesus and Jesus only? And therefore, anything we're doing in the kingdom of God, Anything we are planning together in any committee, anything we are trying to do in the preaching of the gospel, you never, never, never will think again, how does it affect me? Even if it will kill me, I'm nothing. Let it exalt Christ. Let it lift up Jesus the Lord. And make sure that you are always decreasing and he is always increasing in your life. He must, not that he may, if we give him chance whether we give him chance or not he is going to increase he may have to crush us to increase but he will he may have to get us out of the way but he will increase he may have to forget about us if we do not want to really be sanctified and have a will swallowed up in the will of God he may have to pack me by this by the wayside he may have to say you do not understand your head is always in the way your mind is always in the way your philosophy is always in the way your rebellion is always in the way your myself my will what I want my program my timetable is always in the way would you please get out of the way so that I can have my own program because there will be no two kings over the same throne. It is Jesus and Jesus alone that will be king. But you will not allow him to pack you by the wayside. You will not allow him to crush you. Willingly you will submit and you will say Lord Jesus from this morning come and reign in my heart. I want to exalt you. You are Lord of Lords. You are King of Kings over my life, over everything that concerns me exalt the king how do you exalt the king by exemplifying his character that is you ask yourself anything that you are to do what will jesus have done in this situation that's the model that's a perfect example you exalt him by ex exemplifying his character you love him you appreciate him you know that he's unique you know there is none like him is the lover of your soul is your savior is the all in all is your desire is your delight is the one that you love is the one that you embrace you want to go with him anywhere you will climb any mountain because of him you will descend any valley because of him you will go through difficulty because of him you want him you love him he is the only important personality in your life your life is related to him you wake up in the morning what can i do for my lord you want to sleep in the night what have i missed doing for my lord today you are talking for to somebody how can i glorify the lord you are helping somebody how can i show him that it's not me doing it it's jesus doing it you are traveling somewhere how can i make the people that i'm traveling with to know jesus if they don't know jesus everything in your life revolves around the lord jesus christ and you manifest his character you manifest his love you manifest his attributes you manifest all the examples they have shown us in fact you are walking in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ in first Peter chapter 2 and verse 21 first Peter chapter 2 verse 21 for even hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow his steps that we should follow his steps you exemplify his character while you're exemplifying his character you're also expecting his coming expecting his coming you are telling yourself the lord may come today the trumpet may sound today in a moment in a twinkling of an eye without any warning without any announcement the dead in christ will hear the voice of the son of man and they that have died will rise up from their graves and then we which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the lord and you do not know it may be today it may be tonight therefore you tell yourself this may be the last message i will preach before jesus christ comes 
How can I in this probably seeming possibility, in this last message, how can I exalt my king? This may be the last action of love I will do to another person before the coming of my Lord. How can I do it with all my heart, with all my soul, with everything that is within me so that I would say the last thing I did? The last word I spoke, the last kind uh, act or deed of kindness that I did, the last thing that was in my life in a practical way before the coming of the Lord exalted the king. That's why if you're a real Christian, you wake up in the morning, it may be the last day. It may be my last opportunity. You are preaching in a retreat. It may be the last message I will preach before the coming of the Lord. How do I present it? If you preach as if, well, preaching opportunities are always there. I may still be able to preach tomorrow. If I don't uh, prepare the message today, it may not really matter. After all, opportunities will always be there. If you are preaching like that, you are not going to give your best. You are not going to do what is required of a preacher to be done. But it may be my last message. It may be the last song I will sing. It may be the last time I'll be able to serve the people of God in a congress like this. It may be the last encouragement I will give to anyone before the coming of the Lord. It may be the last uh, kind of feet I will wash and wash it their dirty feet and do it for the sake of the Lord. Humble myself and take the position of a servant to serve other people. It may be my last act or representation or demonstration of my faith and my love unto the lord because of my expectation of his kingdom that helps me to exalt the lord all the time in hebrews chapter 9 hebrews chapter 9 reading from verse 28 so christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him that shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation it's coming again but when he comes again it's not coming to offer uh, for the, as a sin offering it's not going to come and offer himself in sacrifice to produce or to give salvation he's done that already is offered himself as a sacrifice for sin so we can have salvation but now he's coming and he'll be coming for the church and because you know that you are expecting his coming you exemplify his character and you are exalting the king now in exalting the king the best way we do that with life with our lives with our actions with our deeds with everything we're doing all our lives you just put the life together and you say this single life i live in this world but once and this one time i'm here i'm going to put the best into it so that i can extend the kingdom of my king that leads us to the final point extending his kingdom extending his kingdom i told you already when we talk about the kingdom of god we are talking actually about a different phases of the kingdom there is no part there is no time to read all the scriptures but let me give you five phases of the kingdom before i now come to the part the phase we are to extend number one the kingdom announced by the prophets the kingdom announced by the prophets if you read the old testament you will see that the prophets announced the coming of the king and you see if you study matthew you're going to see number one the king revealed and that is the purpose of matthew in writing the gospel according to matthew he wants to reveal the king reveal the king reveal the king but as you read on in matthew you will find the king rejected he was rejected rejected by those people and then he told them i abandon your house unto you i leave your house to you desolate and you will not see me until you will say blessed is the one that comes in the name of the lord the king returning the king revealed the king rejected and then the king returning that's what you find in matthew as a broad outline but you see that kingdom that was prophesied in the old 
Testament, that kingdom could not be established immediately because of the rejection of the children of Israel. That goes to number two phase of the kingdom, the kingdom offered but rejected at Christ's first coming. Do you remember the message of John the Baptist? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He is coming. He is coming. He is coming. And if they had been ready at that time, something would have happened. But they were not ready. Therefore, we now pass to the next stage. The present spiritual kingdom, the kingdom that resulted as a result of the rejection of the children of Israel that when Jesus Christ was talking to the people he said do not look here or look there looking for the king he said the kingdom is within you that means the territory of my authority the domain of my rule he said that is within you it's not all over the earth at this time in fact it's not even all over Israel because Israel rejected their king and rejected their kingdom it's not over the Roman Empire either because he didn't reign over them but he said it is within you that is the spiritual face of the kingdom every time somebody gets converted now Jesus becomes king in his life another person gets converted Jesus becomes king in his life another person gets converted Jesus becomes king in his life and as the people are giving their lives to the Lord they are repenting and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ a spiritual kingdom is being established in their heart and Jesus is reigning as king in that way we are extending the present phase of the kingdom of God but then it's going to uh, there's another face that is going to come that is the glorious kingdom to be established on earth for 1,000 years that's another face of the kingdom it will be over all the earth at that time and Jesus Christ will reign in a literal manner for 1,000 years and yet there's still going to be a battle even after that because the devil is going to be released from the bottomless pit and then there is going to be the war there is going to be the conflict but Jesus Christ is going to wipe all those people out Antichrist and the beast and the false prophet and the people that take arms of rebellion against the king they will be wiped out then there will be the great white throne judgment and then after that will the Lord establish the eternal heavenly kingdom when everything will be under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and that is the dominion the kingdom that will be forever and ever and ever come back now in the present situation in the present era in which we're living it is a spiritual face of the kingdom and it is that spiritual face of the kingdom we are to be extending as we are preaching the gospel as people are getting saved and they are making Jesus Lord and King of their lives then the kingdom is being extended and this is not a physical thing it's a spiritual thing in Romans chapter 14 verse 17 Romans chapter 14 verse 17 the king for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost that's the kingdom of God we're talking about now the spiritual face of the kingdom the people that do not have any peace the people that are like troubled waters the sinners the wicked you are introducing to them the prince of peace you are introducing to them the lord of life you are introducing to them the giver of life eternal you are telling them jesus christ has paid it all and if they will repent and give their lives to the lord jesus christ christ will come into them they will come into the kingdom in that present phase as the people are entering into the spiritual kingdom of the Lord, you are extending the kingdom in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. As people are getting born again, their lives are being transformed. They are being taken out of darkness and they are translated 
they are transferred they are placed into the kingdom of his dear son it is happening now and as it is happening now then you understand the kingdom is being extended in matthew chapter 6 matthew chapter 6 reading from verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness you yourself as an individual seek to enter in the present phase of the kingdom receive the king as your lord make him your savior and then remain in his kingdom let the kingdom principles the life of the kingdom or kingdom life described in matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 6 matthew chapter 7 let it be reflected in your life the king is living within the king is controlling our lives and therefore the manifesto of the king the principles in the message of the king is transferred into our lives and we're living as it is described in that sermon on the mount you are living a holy life you are seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness and then all the people you have contact with your immediate family you make them to also seek that same kingdom of god and his righteousness the members of your local church as you have privilege as you have authority to influence them you make them to seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and then it says all these things shall be added unto you the lord is giving us a commission and it is that as we're going now you know that jesus christ is king you have allowed him to enter into your heart the entry of the king then you want him to be reigning there you are exalting him the exaltation of the king and then as you are going away to your various locations you are preaching the gospel you are telling sinners to repent you are telling them to believe on the lord you are extending the kingdom of god in luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 reading from verse 59 and uh, verse 16 and he said to another follow me but he said lord suffer me first to go and bury my father jesus said unto him let the dead bury the dead but go thou and preach the kingdom of god there are things that other people can do and we believers too can do unbelievers bury their dead body we believers too we bury our dead bodies but let it be with a difference the unbelievers they do it as if that's the only thing to do in life burying the dead getting married getting work done and doing all those physical things they do those things as if that is the only thing to do but let there be a difference for the people of god let the dead bury the dead the way they do it it consumes their attention it consumes every all their resources it consumes all their energy but you don't spend all your life just burying the dead just doing what the unbelievers too can do but you let your life make a difference in the kingdom of god go thou and preach the kingdom of god can we do it i said can we do it i bring you back to the challenge of paul the apostle in second timothy chapter 4 and from verse 1 i charge you therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing preach the word be instant in season and out of season reprove rebuke exhort without long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own laws shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables but thou watch thou in all things endure affliction for the sake of the king for the sake of our lord in the process of extending the kingdom ex endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist preach to sinners bring them into the kingdom of god and make full proof of thy ministry the lord is watching us he will be watching over us as we go he will support us in his power as we go he will stay with us in companionship as we go he will manifest his love in our hearts as we go he is going to give us and he's going to provide for us all the needs of our lives everything we need to extend the kingdom he has given everything for you are you willing to give everything back to him 
please you will commit yourself to the lord and say lord i know what you want me to do for the rest of my life i will be exalting the king i will exalt jesus not only that i will ex i will extend his kingdom shall we rise up and tell the lord help me lord help me lord help me lord to exalt the king in my life in my behavior in my character in my attitude help me to exalt the lord not exalt myself in my testimony in my preaching in my family in my place of work in the church help me to exalt the king not to exalt the preacher not to exalt the general superintendent not to exalt the general the uh, the state overseer not to exalt my family not to exalt my husband not to exalt my wife exalt the king exalt the king lift him up lift him up lift him up for the world to see and i if i be lifted up i will draw all men unto myself lift him up lift him up lift him up lift him up he is king give him a free hand in your life give him the total liberty in your life to be king to rule without a rival and every day you wake up let self be kept out let self be kept out in all our committees let self be kept out in the vetting committee in the missions committee in the building committee in any committee we set up let self be kept out and let king reign let the king jesus reign in that committee in our state in our region in our local government in our local church in our schools among the youth in the children ministry in the choir among the ushers everywhere let it be king jesus let it be king jesus let's forget about ourselves let us lift up the lord lift up the lord lift up the lord if they don't take my idea what does that matter if they don't take my suggestion what does that matter if they don't do it the way i want what does that matter exalt the king exalt the king exalt the king don't let yourself complete what the lord compete with the lord jesus christ they don't recognize me why should they they are not promoting me why should they they are not exalting me why should they they are not lifting me up why should they jesus is the one we want to lift up jesus is the one we want to exalt i must decrease i must decrease i must decrease he must increase they didn't write my name there why should they they didn't announce my name for everybody to know me why should they jesus and jesus only let him be exalted in your life let him be the all in lord in your life when he is all in all then you are nothing extend this kingdom extend this kingdom extend this kingdom extend this kingdom preach him lift him up proclaim him present him to everyone you meet his savior his sanctifier his baptizer his healer his deliverer is a provider he is the king is the lover of our soul is the all in all talk about him everywhere you go exalt him and extend his